Welcome to the Maneuver Warfighter Conference uh, for the year uh, 2020. I'm uh, Colonel Sam Edwards, the Director for the Robotics Requirements Directorate here at Fort Benny, Georgia, and I'm joined today by the Deputy Director, Mr. Ted Machuba. I don't think it's any surprise to anyone when I tell you that winning wars today and in the future will require adaptive leaders, skilled soldiers, and well-trained teams empowered with the latest and most advanced technologies. The integration of new technologies into our formations is one of the keys to ensuring our leaders have the necessary tools to increase the lethality of our formations and maintain overmatch against increasingly capable enemies. Human-machine collaboration will allow leaders and formations to see first, understand first, act first, and finish decisively. So with that, uh, Ted and I are going to spend uh, the next few minutes here uh, talking to you about some of the initiatives that we have ongoing uh, here at Fort Benning to add a little more uh, context. So Ted, uh, I think the first thing we should probably uh, uh, inform the audience about is, you know, what, what can uh, everyone expect to see uh, in the brigade combat teams in the next couple of years uh, regarding robots? So... Right now, uh, most of you are aware that we have the, uh, the Raven small unmanned aircraft system inside of uh, brigade combat teams at the company level. We are looking to expand the, uh, the number of air and ground robots significantly over the next few years. Uh, and in the near term, uh, you will start seeing small uh, I'm sorry, soldier-borne sensors inside of our uh, formations. So soldier-borne sensors are nano UAS that are issued to squads to allow them to see what is on the other side of that building, what's on the other side of that terrain feature, so that they can better understand what's going on within their small area. At the same time, we are right now doing the, the down selection to a short-range recon quadcopter that's going to go into our platoon formation to allow the platoon to understand what's going on within their area of operations. We're also getting ready to field the small multi-purpose equipment transport, the SMET, which is really the first robotic ground vehicle that will be the first of many to go into our, our brigade combat team. That SMET is going to be fielded at the battalion level, but the intent is for those battalion to take care of the care and feeding of the, the SMET and then issue it down to the appropriate level below them based on the mission requirements. So you will see SMETs at company level, you'll see SMETs at platoon level, and you will see SMETs at squad level. SMET initially was, uh, was to be a squad element, but uh, we found out that that uh, did not make sense, and we are in the process of, of fielding these systems so that we can develop the tactics, techniques, and procedures for unmanned ground vehicles as we go forward. One of the, uh, the, uh, the selling points was for the SMET was the ability to move 1,000 pounds cross-country and also the ability to uh, have three kilowatts of exportable power. That will now provide that small unit the ability to, uh, to reduce soldier load as appropriate, take uh, weapons that right now would be difficult for a, a small unit to move to a position advantage, and it will also allow you to recharge batteries uh, in uh, austere environments where uh, right now we, uh, we have problems carrying the batteries necessary uh, to, uh, to be able to, uh, to power all of the, uh, the electronic systems that we have in our formations. That's great. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, as a soldier in a, in a BCT formation, uh, whether you're at the battalion company, um, platoon or squad level, uh, every soldier is always looking to, to try to lighten the load uh, so they're more agile and capable uh, once they reach the, the objective area. And power is always a, a, a you know, consideration, always looking to, to recharge batteries and, uh, and keep systems uh, up and running. So great system. And, you know, can you, can you tell us and elaborate a little more on some of the other initiatives that are um, 
being considered right now for the SMET, uh, such as the modular uh, mission payloads? So we're working right now with uh, industry, with the, uh, the program uh, manager for applique and large uh, uh, unmanned ground systems, and also the uh, Combat Capability Development Command's Ground Vehicle Systems Center on Modular Mission Payloads, MMPs. And right now, the three uh, areas that we're looking at are uh, autonomy, because we want to get away from having our soldiers right now remote control those, uh, those SMETs. We want, uh, we want them to be autonomous to the greatest degree possible. We're looking to add communications as a modular mission payload so that soldiers don't have to carry the radios they need to, uh, to uh, talk extended distances. And then finally, we're looking for a, a counter small unmanned aircraft system capability on SMETs that will allow that small unit to be able to protect itself against uh, the enemy's small UASs. That's great. You, you mentioned a, a little bit about it already, but um, you know, if we could elaborate on you know, how are these systems uh, that are entering into the BCT actually going to improve the lethality of the brigade combat team? So right now, especially the, uh, the small unmanned aircraft systems that we're, we're putting into our formation, um, they, they are coming with, uh, with sensors that l allow soldiers and leaders to, uh, to see what is going on within their, uh, their uh, area of operations. So as part of the Observe, Orient, Decide and Act, the OODA loop, we are now providing the, uh, the ability for more information to come into, uh, into a, uh, a formation. That formation now has a better common operating picture as to what is going on, and they can make the appropriate decisions then to engage with their small arms or get uh, uh, external enablers, such as attack helicopters, such as mortars, uh, such as artillery, um, close air support, the, the kinds of things that allow them to, to kill the enemy at extended distances. So uh, that is, uh, that is the, uh, the goal of extending the area over which we can have freedom of action and freedom of maneuver. And robotic systems, and, and now specifically the small UAS that we're putting out there, are going to allow us to do that. The other thing that we're looking for is, uh, is the ability to put some kind of lethality enablers onto our uh, uh, robotic systems, both air and ground. We have some very interesting technologies that, uh, that we're looking to, to integrate into our, uh, our uh, constellation of systems that we have. Um, and that really starts with, uh, with uh, laser designators, but, uh, but really there are other types of uh, of lethality enablers that I think will extend the reach and extend the lethality of the brigade combat team down to uh, probably the platoon level. And, and we see capabilities that are going to be given to platoons that will make them significantly more effective than they are right now. Yeah, that's great. And to kind of shift gears and, and uh, transition to a topic that's been going on uh, for several years now, and, and just coming back from Afghanistan, it, it was uh, a topic um, uh, being discussed and looked at uh, extensively. But how are we going to protect ourselves uh, against uh, small UAS at the platoon and company level? So that, I think that is a, a tremendous question, and we are working with the appropriate folks to include the, uh, the joint uh, counter small UAS office that the uh, Office of the Secretary of Defense just formed uh, within the Pentagon uh, and the fire center. But our equities at uh, Fort Benning, at the maneuver seated, are uh, down at that small unit level, at that tactical edge. And we're looking for um, solutions. Some uh, might be kinetic solutions in terms of, of ways of uh, defeating it with, 
with uh, weapon systems. We are looking at non-kinetic solutions, those kinds of things that, uh, that will allow us to, uh, to use uh, uh, electromagnetic warfare against uh, a, a small UAS. Um, we're, we're actually trying to, uh, to uh, determine if there are specific payloads that we can put on our air and ground systems that will go out and defeat the enemy's small UAS. Uh, there's a, a, a great effort that's going on pulling all of the, uh, the, the uh, technologies together so that we can get those kinds of technologies down to that tactical edge and allow our small units to be able to, to counter that, uh, that uh, small UAS threat that they're seeing right now. And, you know, something that's pretty exciting since I've gotten here at Fort Benning, uh, and that's, you know, looking at the future of robots and artificial intelligence at the small unit level. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, some of the, um, some of the initiatives that are, that are ongoing right now in the realm of artificial intelligence? Yes. So right now we sit on a, uh, an artificial intelligence at small unit, uh, for small unit maneuver working group to try to pull artificial intelligence down to the small unit level. Um, much of the, the effort across uh, uh, the Department of Defense and, uh, and within the Army is at enterprise level, which is uh, uh, echelons well above the platoon. But our goal is to try to provide artificial intelligence capabilities at the platoon level to allow that platoon to, be, to, to make better decisions. And when I say decisions, those are, those are the, uh, uh, the, the decide part of the OODA loop. We want, to, we want them to make better decisions 10 times faster than they can right now. Uh, to, uh, to be able to increase the, uh, the ability that for them to be able to act, we're also looking to provide them with uh, uh, robotic uh, and AI capabilities uh, that will make them significantly more effective than they are right now. And that is an initiative that we've been working on now for uh, the last two years, uh, which we call the, uh, the 10X uh, Robotic and Artificial Intelligence Equipped Dismounted Infantry Platoon. Uh, we have been um, talking to, uh, to industry, we've been talking to uh, the army labs, we've been talking to academia, we have uh, been uh, asking them for technologies that will not only allow us to be 10 times more effective, uh, but also provide the AI tools to be able to uh, not only uh, have um, the automatic target recognition uh, uh, which is the narrow AI on sensors, both soldier-borne sensors, but, and when I say sensors, uh, then it's the sensors that you have on the soldier, uh, but also provide uh, uh, the narrow AI on the robotic sensors so that they can start finding the things of military uh, uh, interest and um, reporting those back to an artificial intelligence cloud. At that cloud, um, the, uh, the information is fused together into a common operating picture, and then it is provided to soldiers within that platoon so they can make decisions based on the information that they've been given. Uh, when they make, a, 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 for example, a lethality decision, that goes back through that AI cloud to a lethality enabler on one of our robotic systems that, that carries that out. Uh, it, it is a very exciting project that we're working on, and uh, right now we are in the process of, uh, of integrating that into the Army's um, uh, vision of the future, which is Project Convergence. And we are looking forward to, uh, to, to integrating 10X into Project Convergence and then having demonstrations in uh, 2021 at Fort Benning and then moving out to Yuma Proving Ground for 
the Project Convergence demonstration in October of 21. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of great and exciting things going on around the Army uh, and specifically here at, at Fort Benning. Um, but I, and I will tell you, you know, I appreciate you, know, you taking the time to, to hear about some of these initiatives. Uh, and I also want to, uh, you know, let everyone know that, you know, we're only as good as the information that, that we receive. So we really need to hear um, from those leaders that are out at the brigade combat team level and below um, on what your what your gaps are, um, you know where where do you need uh, robotics uh, to to assist you, um, and let us know. Contact us, uh, and, and we'll we'll do everything we can to to help you out uh, and fill those gaps. So again, thanks for your time uh, here today, uh, and enjoy the rest of the conference.